good morning, good afternoon, good evening, it's you, welcome to the tube, about everything grand does work in your world, hello there, welcome to another episode of How to Play Like One Only, the genius, Mr. Joffrey Shanty. Ha! Uh, in this episode, it might be a fail on one, so get yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or whatever that takes your fancy, uh, I want to talk about how to set up your amp, sound like John, I want basically to talk, talk John Tone and set up if you will so i'm going to talk about how to set your amp up uh how to kind of like set the kind of main pedals and just just in general talk about kind of john's sound and and why it works and why some people are, are, like i know out there are having difficulty with say like the ds2 or the ibanez wah kind of the volume jumps and whatnot so i'm going to talk about that today in more detail than i ever have so this might be a bit of a long video so uh the main thing I'm going to do, use today is a DS2, the Ibanez Wah, I'm going to talk about my Zoom G2 as well, somebody asked about how I got that set up. Uh, I'm just going to use my John strap. Uh, the amp I'm going to use mainly to demonstrate how John's setup works is the Plexi, because it's the closest thing I've got to uh, John's you know, Marshall Major Silver Jubilee. So I'm going to use this as uh, kind of like the main amp, but I will be using the Cell One Twenty and also the Custom as when I, to get John's sound through the custom, you have to use an overdrive pedal, and I'm going to show you that with the uh, Tone City Golden Plexi later on. But we'll get to that later on. So, first things first, uh, let's talk uh, about how to set your amp up and why you might be having difficulty with the DS2 and the Ibanez Wah giving you a, a huge volume jump. Um, quite simply, if your DS2 and your Ibanez Wah are doing this, that, let's not do that for the too long, um, your amp is not compressed enough, it basically it's not distorted enough basically, I said that really posh, distorted, oh, it's distorted, yeah, yeah, um, you know, d d this sat, I've got the amp set up really quiet at this point in time, I've got the volumes really low and it sounds like John. <laughs> The DS2 and the Ibanez don't work through that sound, and I think this is where people are getting a bit kind of uh, confuddled, so to say. Um, just because it sounds like John doesn't mean it is John. Now, I learned, I've learned this over uh, like a period of time. It, your amp needs to be distorted in, because when it's clean like this, all the harsh frequencies from the Ibanez Wah and the DS2. Uh, if you think like you know that's your kind of waveform, they're going like this. They're just going crazy as soon as you turn. Like, say that's your amp signal going along this line. As soon as you turn on your DS2, it's just going to go skyrocket because it's set that way. But if you have your amp compressed, like so distorted, slightly distorted, not so a point where it's like literally distortion, but so the amp is kind of like, you know, working quite hard, or if it's like, um, like a two-channel amp and you've got a drive channel, like simulation of it working hard, um... What's going to happen is those you know, those real high nasty frequencies and that real kind of high volume jump caused by the DS2 and the Ibanez Wah have nowhere to go. So if it, if it's kind of like you know from this where it can go way like that and go really loud to this where it can't go anywhere, that's the difference. That's the reason it's not working. So basically, if your Ibanez Wah and your DS2 are still jumping volume massively, it means your amp is not compressing enough it's not compressing at all if it's really jumping so uh you heard it there and the same thing goes with the Ibanez Wah check this this is horrible so you can hear huge volume jump hope that comes across I'm not gonna do it very long because it's super super loud and I don't want to die but that's with the volumes at like basically one on the plexi so what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna stop the camera I'm going to crank the volumes and find the space where they need to be and then I'll show you again, I'll show you what I mean by the compression thing and how it kind of reigns in the DS2 and the, the Ibanez just by crushing the signal and just keeping everything a bit more uniform and compressed. So uh, yeah, let me just alt that now. Okay, so uh, I've altered the EQ and altered the volume. So I've got uh, EQ now is totally different to what it was. Uh, EQ was, presence was on 6, bass was on 10, middle was on 7 and treble was off, and then both volumes were set at one. Now, I've got presence at six, bass is on zero, middle is at zero, treble is at zero, volume one is now on eight, and volume two is on four. 
Without the attenuator in the back, this would be deafeningly loud, even at a 50 watt. Um, but, you know, still sounds like John. <laughs> It's not, yeah, you, know, you could say, hang on a second, that's not too far away from the original sound. No, it's not, but the amp is now working 10 times harder. I'm pushing the amp a lot harder because I've got the volumes cranked. So now, when I turn the DS2 on and the Ibanez Wah, you don't get that massive volume jump. So this is the clean, kicking into DS2. Same thing with the Ibanez Wah. So basically, what that, you know, and this has also been confirmed by um, JF Effects asking uh, uh, Dave Lee about his things. Um, John would always run his amps on that verge of breakup, and because it's broken up, it's not 100% clean, you do get that ability to have your signal compressed and your DS2 and your Ibanez Wire to work. So, next thing I want to do, I'm going to switch over to this CL120 and I'm going to show you how to kind of like dial that in on a distortion channel because not everyone's got access to one of these and I'm very, very lucky I even do. So uh, I'm going to show you on my CL120. Then I'm going to show you how it doesn't work on every amp going over the custom. So let me switch over now to the CL120 and uh, show you that, that exact same thing again, but you know with a gain dial this time, which is a lot easier than kind of messing around with all this lot and you know going deaf in the process, because, well, why not? You know, here you go. So this... So this is the attenuator off on the on the plexi. You know, very very loud, and uh, I can I can uh, test to how loud John was because I was very look I was lucky enough to I saw the Chili Peppers play Hyde Park, and I was in the crowd near the front on John's side of the stage when uh, Dave Lee was line checking John's amps, and nothing was coming through the PA, but you could still hear the amplifiers on stage even with that many people in Hyde Park, you could still hear those amplifiers, I mean, being that close, it was just shocking. So he would have been deafening on, on stage, and I say it is a case of, if your Ibanez and your DS2 are still peaking out, really nasty, horrible volume jump, your amp is not compressed or distorted enough. So, let me uh, demonstrate that again through the Cell 20, and then we'll talk about the custom and how to get it if your amp won't do that. Okay, so, plugged into the Cell 20 now, um, this won't work on every amp with a distortion channel. Certain, and this is why I'm going to show you the custom next, because certain distortion channels will not have kind of the gain stages stepping up in such a way. Like, the, but Marshall MG does it, the CL120 does it, and a few of amps I've got do it. But some amps will not do this, and the custom is definitely one of them. So it's, it's kind of really cool. I've got that to show you because some amps will not. The gain stage starts off mega distorted. Like this, the, the, the custom starts off ACDC esque, and that's not what we want. We want it cleaner than that. Um, but uh, you know, I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, so at this point in time, I've got the Cell 120 set, the gain on the on the dirty channel is set too, and it does give you the John sound. The moment you kick on the DS2, it gets horrible, you know, super loud. Same thing with the Ibanez gives you a volume jump you can't use. It's just horrible, and they sound rubbish. You know, they just sound horrible and harsh. But, if I was to turn the gain up now, so the amp's working a little bit harder, and you can kind of hear the difference in hiss, if I, I don't know. Let me crank the amp. So this is on two. Let me move over here for a sec. So this is on, this is a gain on two, and if I just put it up one notch, you know, you can hear it start to hiss at me. And now, if I play through it, you know, it still sounds the same. Be a little bit, I would say it's a little bit more kind of uh, gained up and you know, a smidge, you know, not massively, it's not distorted. You know, it's got, it's still very clean, but now it'll rain in the DS2 because it's squishing the signal more than it was on 2. Literally no volume jump there at all, and same with the Ibanez one. You know, 
so that's what you that's what you want to be doing. You want to be pushing like your distortion channel um, or your amp if it's a single channel amp. Very hard to get John's clean tone because it's not super clean. You hear bands like ACDC always saying we don't play distorted, we play clean. It's like yeah, that's true to an extent because you know a plexi on full whack is still very clean sounding, but it is distortion. But it's that natural kind of distortion you, you know you get from an amplifier being on full whack and because of that the amp is now you know instead of being wide open it is compressed and that's where that comes from and it gives you a smoother even a response and a more more sustain uh, whereas if it's super super clean you won't get much sustain and it'll sound a bit you know thin and weedy so you know that's what you want to be after really with um, an overdrive a dirty channel if you will so just something just to push it a little bit more into that edge of breakup so you know, just so the DS2 and the Ibanez Wire have something nice to kind of like sit on and, and, and just to rein them in instead of it just kind of like, you know, going, hey, I'm just going to go mental. You know, so that's kind of what I'll we'll be doing. But like I say, not every amp will do this. And I'm going to show you that now through the custom amplifier. And I'm going to show you how you can get around that. So that's, hopefully this, you know, hope this is making sense. I hope. Ooh. Um... And again, the same thing again, if I just click over to the clean channel of the CL120, let me turn that down a smidge. You know, sounds like John, but the moment you kick the DS2 in it, volume jumps and it sounds horrible and, and harsh and nasty. So, you know, you kind of want to be that kind of... You know, if you feel it's too distorted, it probably isn't. You know, it, John's tone is not 100% clean. That's all, you know. But anyway, let's move on to the custom now and show you it through that and how, no matter what you do, you cannot get it to sound like that. Okay, so we're now into the custom KG. So, so far, I've had to crank the plexi to get John's clean sound, so the amp compresses. I've had to use the dirty channel on the CL120 to get the amp compressed, to get that kind of like John clean tone and make the DS2 and the WH10 sit properly. But now you get a problem. You've got an amp like this, where the lowest gain setting, oh, that's not on breakthrough, is this. And it sounds like that, and it sounds a bit shrill and a bit nasty and too distorted. The DS2 and the Urban Wild will love it. They'll sit on top of it lovely. But that doesn't sound any of the job channel. It sounds like he's left his wire pedal on. Basically, that's what that sounds like. So that doesn't work, you know. And, and if I go, well, let me turn up the gain a bit more. And again, the Ibanez Y and the DS2 love it because it's a, it's a distorted signal, but we're getting into ACDC territory. You know, and we don't want that. It's, there's just, the lowest gain setting on the custom is too, um, is too high to get the John sound and it just thins out. You know, the, the, the amp, this, this amp likes to be flat out gain. You know, like that. But, I have the same problem again. If I use the clean channel, lovely clean sound. Sounds like John, but volume jumps useless. Can't use it. So, what do we do? Tone City Golden Plexi to the rescue. Okay, so I've got the uh, Golden Plexi now plugged in. This is from the Custom. So this is the lead coming into the front end of the Custom. I'm set to the clean channel on the Custom. So the first thing it hits is the Golden Plexi, and it's bypassed at this point in time. And you can see I've got the gain. That, that's off, that mark, and that's where I normally have it. It's about one, and it's like in half. And this will vary... Um, depending on your amplifier, basically how it responds. The, the custom is kind of slightly... It's clean, but it's kind of like got a little bit of something. But um, the, um, the Golden Plexi works as a really lovely kind of like clean boost around this setting. Once you get it to a quarter, you get it to like ACDC. Once you get to 12, you get a bit kind of like a bit more kind of classic rock and all the way up is like Van Halen. But uh, this, amp, this pedal does so much more than people say like, you know, People say it does like you know does it's all the gain or none of the gain. That's that's nonsense. It does so much more than that, and I'm just about to show you. So I've got it about between zero, like off and one, 
and this is at the beginning of the chain so this is i say this is the amp and then i'm running into my zoom g2 which is kind of taking the place of the, the chorus then the ibanez wah then the call start then that and then the ds2 is right at the end of the chain into the guitar so um so i'm going to turn this on now i'm going to show you it i've got the tone set at a quarter volume is set at half and i say gain is set at kind of like you know 1.5 1.5 if you, 0 0.5 if you will so let's turn it on and i'll show you what it sounds like Okay, so just to recap, this is the clean channel on the custom without the golden plexi. Lovely sound, sounds like John, but if I kick in the, the, the golden plexi now. There's a little bit of more fatness and you're like, well, that doesn't sound much different. No, it doesn't. But from the DS2 doing this to the DS2 doing this, there is a world of difference. It's just controlling it. The, the golden plexi on all the time is now giving that simulation of the amp working really hard, like the Marshall, the, pl the plexi up here. It's giving it that, it, like, it, that inability to jump high in its volume, and it sounds absolutely brilliant. <laughs> shoddy playing was up to scratch oh. but yeah it's just giving me that extra push over the edge and just sending the amp into more break up but it won't normally do it say just that's as that's as uh clean as that's as broken up as i can get the custom it will not it won't get to the point where it's compressing enough for ds2 or the ms1 to work so that's the answer to that. If you are, ha if your amp will literally just go, no, I'm too distorted on this section, on this channel, cranked up, whatever. I am not going to do that kind of edge of break up, uh, clean tone, uh, because it is clean, kind of ish. It's, it's not 100 percent clean. It's kind of cleanish. Yeah, if your amp will just not do it, it refuses. It's like point out to it, it's like no, like a grumpy school ch child re refusing to do his homework. You need an overdrive, and I cannot recommend the Golden Plexi enough. It just is everything. It's a clean boost, it's an overdrive, it's a distortion, and it's a mega distortion. I love that thing, and it's it's one of the best distortion pedals in the world. It really is to me. I absolutely love it. And it's so inexpensive. It's like 40 quid, uh, which, is, which is nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, you know, it's not throwaway money, but it, it is very, very cheap in comparison to, say, um, something else out there i can't think of anything about. like an ibanez tube screamer for instance they they do the job really well as well but a bit of a word of warning the ibanez tube screamer hates the ds2 and the ds2 hates the tube screamer absolutely will not work hand in hand the ibanez wah doesn't mind but the ds2 despises it you will not get those <laughs> fat DS2 John tones out of a, a tube screamer it just will not happen it hates it it's just I don't know why it must be something in the frequency range it does despises the DS2 so um I say I cannot recommend the Golden Plexi enough if you're a John Shanty fan and you know even though my amps do this I still I still prefer the Golden Plexi it's the pedal I have on all the time no matter what it's on my pedal board and it's on 100% of the time pretty much, well 99.9% .9 of the time. I just adore that pedal. It's just the coolest thing in the world, especially for, you know, to get a John Shane So, um, let me move on now. Uh, I'm gonna switch it back into the CR120 and uh, just go, you know, just take the golden plexi away and just go straight into my board. And I wanna talk about uh, what my G2 is doing. And then I'm gonna talk about the Ibanez War and how to set that. And then the DS2 and how to set that. And then guitar, how to set that. And then that's the call it a day at that. So. Uh, let me unplug the golden plexi, switch back to the CL120, and uh, I'll see you in but a second. Okay, so uh, I've had a few questions on people asking how have I got the Zoom G2 set up. Uh, quite simply, everything's off, everything's kind of bypassed. Now you, you can see all the way around to the control, which does uh, all sorts of other stuff that I'm not going to go into because I don't really understand it. Everything's off, you know, the, the noise gates, the effects, the compression, the drive, everything uh, this is doing is kind of like it's not really doing anything. Yeah, you know, it's just there. If I, you know, if I unplug from the CR120 and 
bypass this all together. It's the same sound without this as it is with it. But what I'm using it for is chorus. And this is basically simulating the C1, which I don't have access to. And I'll talk a bit more about C1 in a sec, because I recently found something out from uh, this really awesome video I found on, U uh, well, I got told about on YouTube. A guy actually messaged me saying, can you check this video out? There's something about the C1 that's very important, which I actually forgot to mention up to now, but I'll talk about that in a sec. So I've got it on the CH uh, thing. I've got it set to 50, 40, and 50. And I'll show you the sound in a minute. It just gives you that really nice lush kind of John chorus. And uh, A7 is my clean, A6 is chorus. And I've got A8 set up for a slapback delay, like the Poland, Chili Peppers Poland gig intro where he has that kind of wire intro. But anyway, let me uh, remount the camera and I'll show you the chorus sound. Uh, isn't it? Well, I'll, while I'm here, I might as well show you this as well. The Ibanez Warrior is maxed out on 10. I don't know if you can see, it's a bit dark in there. And the usual thing, you've all seen it. The DS2 is maxed out on 10 and set to the turbo mode. That's you know straight up, basically. Uh, mode 1 isn't John. Mode 2 is John. And it's also Kurt Cobain. But uh, that's another video for another time. So, let me remind the camera and let's talk more about the chorus sound and uh, what the G2 is actually doing. Okay, so uh, my chorus sound, you saw the settings, it's 50, 40, 50 on the CH model. Uh, it just gives me that really nice kind of chorusy sound to do stuff like sod squeal. You know, that kind of thing. It, it's just a really nice kind of... ...wash kind of chorus sound. You know, because... I couldn't afford an original C1 if I wanted one, and not many people can, and they're so rare to come across. You have to kind of find the next best thing, and I have, I've got to say, the Boss Chorus Ensemble is probably the best. Uh, the Blue Pedal, uh, the Chorus Ensemble is probably the best simulation of a C1 I've heard. It just sounds bob on, and you have the ability to run it out into stereo, into two amps like John does, and I'm, I'll talk about that later on, about uh, how John's stereo setup works and all that kind of thing. But, um, but also, I found out the other day, and this comes back to the Golden Plexi, the C original CE1, even when it's off, gives you ability to line boost, which is basically all I was doing with the Golden Plexi, is just boosting the amplifiers and pushing the amplifiers more. So the CE1, even when it was off, in John's setup, was probably the, the keyest kind of component to kind of John's sound, because it distorted the amplifiers more, it pushed them more. So basically the CE1 was doing what the Golden Plexi was just doing. Without the CE1, John, we probably would have had more of a hard time getting his amps to the right place. They might not have even done it. But with the CE1, you know, it helped push the amps into distortion mode. And if you've got one, you know, you, you probably know this already. But um, I didn't know that until recently. Uh, a guy, like I say, a guy messaged me on Facebook says, check out my video. And I watched it and I was like, that is, that is dope. That is so cool. You know, I've been studying Josh Shani for 15 years and like, what, 14 and a half years. And I'm still learning new things. It's so cool. It just, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. So, I say, the G, coming back to the G2 quick, that's just simulating the C1. That's all that's there for, is just to do that. And also, like, A8, which is that kind of slap back into so you can do. You know, just so you can do that. And I have got other things in here. Like for dust. Which is just the C1 with a. Um, uh, we'd set to the vibrato mode because the C1 is a chorus and a vibrato pedal at the same time. Uh, but he has his chorus set quite wild. It's, it's a kind of a big pulsy kind of sound. Yeah, even more so at Slane Castle. It was really lush at Slane Castle. I don't know what, the, what was going on there, but it was a lot more lush than it normally is. But um, but he has got a bit more of a, a cleaner-ish sound. It's a, we know by now it's not 100% clean. Anyway, so that's what the C, that's what the uh, the G2 doing is, is simulating the C1. And I say you know the Golden Plex was basically uh, simulating the boost of the, the gain boost of the C1. And now the C1 gain boost has been simulated by the Dirty Channel on the C120. I hope that made sense. But uh, you know I hope it's made sense up to this point. So, moving on to the Ibanez Wah, I just have it on 10 all the time. There are occasions 
you see on the Federation Square Jam, John's actually got it turned down a smidge. But he is you see him going down every now and again. I swear he's tweaking it and messing it around. Because mainly, it's on flat out. And I say, especially through that kind of um, overdriven kind of clean tone, you know, you need it flat out. You know, you get a 21st century guitar solo. <laughs> You know, so that's where I was set the Ibanez Wah. Just have it on full tilt all the time on the guitar setting. The bass setting's cool as well for experimenting, but it's just the guitar setting. And finally, the DS2 maxed out on that turbo setting just gives you that mid boost. If I set it to the other setting, it doesn't quite sound right. <laughs> It's, it's all right, but it's a bit too muddy, you know. With on on the um, oh, easy tiger on the turbo mode, basically, you know, on, on setting two, it just gives you that bit more of a mid range boost, and it does sounds right for John. <laughs> yeah, it, it just gives you that kind of right kind of sound. Um, I feel again. These settings might not work for you, like for instance, my, my amp at this point in time, treble, middle and bass are all on zero. The only thing I'm using is volume and gain, you know, but it just gives me the right... <laughs> yeah, it gives me the right kind of sound that I'm after, you know. You know, that's what works for me. You will have to tweak and, and find what works for you and your guitar and your gear and your leads and patch leads because everything has, an, uh, has a, a knock-on effect to what you're using. Patch leads, power supply, you know, guitar, guitar strings, everything does. It's, it's mad, absolutely mad. So you will have to tweak and change, but hopefully this will give you an idea of what you kind of need to be going for. But I would say I've been as wide the DS2. I am flat out all the time. There are occasions on the By The Way tour where John would have his distortion lower. The Sao Paulo gig, uh, he's got it very low there. He, he doesn't have the distortion high at all. I would say it's somewhere between a quarter and half. It gives you a cleaner kind of sound. But um, most of the time, it is flat out. It, most of the time, especially on the Off The Map tour, where you combine it with a DS1, but that's a whole new thing altogether. Or, you know, Stadium Arcadian, where, you know, he had the DS, you know, he's got the DS2 and he combines it with either a microamp or, or whatever he felt like at the time. But, um, but yeah, that's it. And the same thing goes with fuzzes. I mean, if you've got like a big muff, um, I would have sustain and volume on flat out. I would have the whole pedal flat out, to be honest with you, because you can with that kind of sound, that, that broken up, edge of break up clean sound, you can have everything maxed out. <laughs> And it still sounds really cool. So this is my kind of uh, big model. You know, it just behaves. Having your amp set this way just makes things behave. And it's really cool. Uh, and uh, so now, there is one more thing I want to talk about quickly. And it's the Ibanez Wah reissue that I use. Because the bypass is terrible. And we all know how terrible the bypass is. But... I want to show you with this setting how that isn't an issue. So let me talk about that. Okay, so uh, kind of nearly there now in this video. I'm, uh, uh, it's, it, I know it's a long one. I hope, but I hope it's informative, and I hope you know this is helping you out. You know, trying to get close to John's kind of sound because let's be honest, if you don't feel like you sound like John when you go to play stuff, you're not going to play the best you can play because you you feel like you're not quite there. So I hope this is kind of helping you get you know, closer to that kind of John sound. I mean, you can only ever approximate anyway, because none of us unfortunately are John for Shanty, and we're never going to sound 100%, but we can kind of learn to approximate. Anyway, anybody who bought an Ibanez Wah WH-10 V2 uh, was probably as disappointed as I was when I found that it did this to your clean sound. <laughs> Meh. Rubbish. Just... It just destroyed your clean tone. It just took everything away that was sparkly and ruined it. Just made it really dark. The bypass signal was terrible. So I was just dis disappointed with that. But up until uh, a couple of months ago, I didn't realize you can use it with that, say, with the dirty channel. So if I switch over to that as a clean channel, it sounded awful, just 
lifeless and dull. But if I go down to the Dirty Channel where I've got the gain boosted, uh, and I've also added a bit of mid in, mid's now on one, uh, I now get... Uh, I get my John tone back. And I've got my Ibanez Wah. So I was well happy to realise that, like, you know, all he's got lost with the Ibanez Wah, and that was when I realised that it needs to see a distorted signal all the time. It can never see a clean signal, no matter what you do. And I don't know if this is true for the originals, uh, as I've never had been lucky enough to get my mitts on one. But the v, the V2, don't throw it out, don't sell it. I had two and I sold one, and I'm really annoyed about that because I want another one for my main board now, and I don't have one. And they're really hard to come by now because I've been discontinued them again. And anybody who wants to sell them, they're selling them different stupid money. But anyway, um, you know, literally just run it through a distorted signal. Just, you know, as soon as you run it through a distorted signal, you can get your tone back. But if you run it through a clean signal, it's a no go. So it does run it through a distortion channel. So, yeah, awesome. Ibanez, we need to just bring this pedal back out again so we can all enjoy them. Uh, because they are awesome, you know, just a few things to fix. Um, but yeah, so it works just through a distorted signal. Don't use a super clean signal, it'll sound terrible, it won't work, it'll sap all the tone. But if you run it through an overdriven signal already, well, as kind of edge of breakup kind of sound, you get it to behave, you get it to respond. So, uh, you know, very super cool. So again, you know, I'd bypassed the G2, the Zoom G2, which I thought was kind of helping it. And I found out it wasn't, it was just kind of the dirty channel of the CL120 or my Golden Plexi or, or my Tube Screamer back when I first got it. Um, so yeah, let it see a, dis a, s a slightly distorted signal and your tone will just come flooding back. It will no longer be dark and muddy and horrible and, and lifeless like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> when I first plugged in it was like that. I was like, what's it done? But, uh, but yeah, so anyway, so that's how to set up pedals, that's how to set up amps, that's how to set up an amp that will not do that kind of edge of breakup thing. Uh, just to show you a single channel amp has to be super super loud so you know it's better if you have an amp with two channels and I say failing that the Tone City Golden Plexi trust me it's the best thing for John Tone it just works it's so cool it's so versatile it's awesome everyone needs one of them I really do and I cannot rave about them enough I really cannot they're so cool I love it um, and I will be buying another one very very soon because I've only got one and I need two just in case um so yeah, let me talk quickly about guitar setup, now we'll talk through John's amp setup, and that's it from this video. I know, sorry, very long one. But yeah, let's talk about guitar pickup setup here. Okay, so pickups on John's guitar, he's 62, let's talk about his 62. They varied. When, if you look at kind of some uh, footage from off the map, they're fairly high. Well, not fairly high, they're probably about uh, two to three millimeters, give or take neck pickup, bridge pickup, but as time progressed, these pickups changed height all the time, but they were eventually very, very low on his 62 strap. They were super low, especially with neck pickup. If you look at Slane Castle at the end of Don't Forget Me, where the, where the camera pans in on John, really super close, you can see his neck pickup is so, so low. It's, it's almost flush with a scratch plate. And uh, this is the way it was um, during the Stadium Arcadium tour, mainly, that it's very, very low. I mean, it does fluctuate, and it's just kind of like... Because the height of your pickups obviously dictates how much output you have. And I've always been... Um, I've always been of the, the brain of the higher you pick up, the more output you get, yes, but the less... Yeah, the less your guitar will respond. You just get no dynamics because you're out. Because uh, if, if your pickups are super high, you're always compressing your amp and your guitar will just respond in one way. And that's an okay thing, but you want your, your guitar to be a lot, you know, I want my guitar to be as clean as possible and let the pedals or the amp do its job. Let, let it distort the guitar, not the other way around. Um, you know, and you can get kind of demonstrate that with the cell on 20s clean channel. If I have my pickups really high on this guitar, it distorts, if I have them low, it's nice and clean. So, um, I would recommend that you have your pickups very low to get John's kind of sound, especially with neck pickup. You, uh, on a strap, 
you want it kind of, I would say about a millimeter above the scratch plate. So from from base side to treble, uh, base side to treble side, you want it about a millimeter. Middle pickup, maybe about a millimeter and a half, and your bridge pickup wants to be substantially substantially higher. So say about two millimeters on the base side and two and a half on the treble side. So it wants to be angled. I would say that's kind of like the best thing, because. John always had his neck pickup cleaner than his bridge pickup because the bridge pickup is where you get those, you know, those kind of things in relation to your neck pickup, uh, which is, you know, nice and warm and just, you know, just in general, just a lot, a lot of kind of a cleaner kind of sound to that kind of sound. So that's what I would say on those pickups. If you look at his 55, it is a little bit different. Those pickups are super high and it's just whatever you know, whatever worked for that guitar. I don't know if it was because maybe it had the, you know, we know it didn't have the original pickups, but the original electrics could have been in that 55 and they could have been quite weak. And as a result, the, the output of that guitar was lower to his 62. So he had to bring those pickups up, um, you know, which we now know are not SSLs. Uh, they're just kind of like, you know, your, your bog standard American, you know, strap pickups. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's another video for another time talking about John's pickups. You know, we all we all know now, thanks to Dave Lee, that they're not SSLs. Although I am I am dubious about his 55. You know, his, his 62, I don't doubt that maybe they were just kind of like, you know, your bog standard American USAs. But um, John did say in an interview how he bought the 55 as all original. And then he took it to a friend who knew about uh, vintage guitars and it turned out there were SSLs that he bought in the guitar originally. And I find it hard to believe that John would change them out if they were kind of modern pickups and they were a bit more reliable, because obviously, like, you know... And also, there's an interview with Dave Lee, which I find a bit weird. Um, it was in a guitarist mag a long time ago where he said all John's guitars are stock. So I don't know what, quite what's going on there. I don't know quite what to make of these answers recently. It's out there to some, for, for somebody's fine. It was a guitar magazine. It was one of the first guitar magazines I ever bought with John on the front. He's got his red Jaguar and his brand brand by the way era. But um, you know, I swear there's a bit in that in that in that interview where he says all his guitars are stock. So you know, let's, let's you know, I don't I don't really know what to say about that one. But anyway, uh, any single coil will do the job. It really will. Any you know any Strat single coil will do the job. Even my Squire Bullet here will do the job. You know it really well so anyway um let's finish up by talking about john's uh, amp signal uh, jf effects has awesome diagrams showing you the signal path of john uh from dave lee and, and you know all those kind of things and microphone diagrams and all that kind of stuff so you know check out jf effects absolutely awesome but uh i just want to talk about the stereo out thing and stuff like that quick so let's just talk about that and that's this video Okay, the last thing I just want to talk about is John ran his amps in stereo. Is this important? Not really, no. Um, I think it was more John like the combination of the Silver Jubilee and the uh, Major, like in live. But if you watch him do certain gigs, like the Federation Square where he's just got a Silver Jubilee, even though it's the black Tolexed one, it's still a Silver Jubilee, it's the black one. Um, you know, in a couple of other gigs where John's just kind of like got one amp, he still sounds the same. The, still, the power is still there. And again, it comes back to the fact of the amps are running on, on at that kind of uh, semi-broken up kind of signal. And it just makes it fat, you know, really big and fat sounding. So uh, the chorus thing, the, 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 the stereo thing is cool if you can do it. And having two amps on at the same time is awesome. The stereo sound is so cool, but um, it's not a necessary thing, so don't kind of like go out there thinking I need to get you know two amplifiers to emulate John. You don't, so don't worry about that. Uh, John did it because he could. Yeah, you know, it is literally as simple as that. He could. He had his setup that way because he could. Um, one of a mention as well. Let's talk about the slash rig. I spoke about it before, but as you're looking at John's setup, the far right, far right uh, Marshall double stack was just set for his Les Paul straight in, no pedals called the Slash Rig because Silver Jubilee and the Les Paul has been part of Slash's setup for, you know, for ages since the Usual Illusions tour in the 90s, so early 90s. So, um, There was apparently, Dave Lee said that at one point they ran reverb through the 
Silver Jubilee and kept the major dry, but um, but that didn't last very long. And also, John was very sparing the reverb. He didn't use it all the time. It was kind of like for songs and atmospheric parts, you know, Don't Forget Me being one of them, uh, all sorts of other things. But mainly, John's signal was very dry. You, got, you know, he was playing big arenas. You don't need reverb in big arenas. You know, the arena does it for you. Um, in the studio, he would obviously use reverbs, but live... He was very sparing with his reverb, and you can tell he is. And the same with the MXR microamp. That isn't on all the time. It's just not. If it was on all the time, John's signal would be over overdriven, like really ACDC overdriven. Because you know you got a uh, you know coming back to this thing, the amps were on edge of break up. The CE one was pushing it with the level and breaking it up as well. So if you add that MXR on to that, you're just going to get more gain. And John would use the MXR more for more gain with the DS2 or Californication solo. There are uh, recordings of the Californication solo out there where you can hear him turn it on. And he's constantly to and fro in to his board at some times on, on, the, on the intro to Californication. And um, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a really good example that I can think of off the top of my head. I can't think of one. Ah, uh, Venice Queen, uh, Slain Castle. When John does the... <laughs> If you listen closely, when he first starts doing that, the amp, it, 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 his guitar sounds really quite distorted. And then you see him do this. He, he, he moves his face. It's a close-up of his face, and he moves. And he goes somewhere over to his right side, which is where the MXR is. And all of a sudden, it's a lot cleaner. So I'm pretty positive that's the MXR on for the... Just to get a bit more kind of boost for those volume spoils, but as soon as um, he starts playing the riff, he doesn't like it, and he turns it off. Uh, same thing with fuzz pedals as well. They're not on all the time. You know, um, intro to the Sigali is the DS2. It's not a big muff. It's the DS2, and there's an AOL session of scar tissue during the uh, uh, did -did 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 Stadium Arcadium era where John is using his DS2. Uh, using his big muff for the solo and he switches his select switch down because he doesn't like this it's too dark and uh the last solo of that scar tissue he actually ends on his turns his ds2 off which means he switched from the big muff to the ds2 because he didn't like the ds2 uh, the uh, big muff sound wanted to get to the ds2 so when you think it's a fuzz pedal it's not it's the ds2 because it has that fuzzy sound which i'll show you in a sec and i'll i'll play out with but anyway so that's that. I hope this video has been informative. I hope it kind of helps you out a bit more trying to understand what the DS2 and the Ibanez Wah need to see in, in terms of amp signal. Uh, talking about uh, how to set the pedals, how to set your pickups on your guitar. Your action also wants to be fairly high. You don't want a really low action to get sound like John because you need those big bends to kind of really scream out. You're not going to get out of a low action. Gauge 10 strings preferably as well. John used an 11 on his high E. Um, just to get, you know, just less break uh, problem, breaking problems. But other than that, you know, I hope I hope this video has been informative. I know it's been a long one, but I hope, you know, I hope it explains all of, uh, you know, uh, how to get kind of like closer to John's sound. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again very soon for another one. And uh, yeah, have a great morning, afternoon, and evening. Goodbye now. DS2, all of this sound.